My dear students, dear friends, welcome to Galand IAS. This is our World History Revision Series. Here we will be dealing the summary of World History modules, right from Industrial Revolution to the disintegration of USSR and to formation of a unipolar world. This will definitely help you in your civil service exam preparation, especially in your GS1 and your history optional. Detailed analysis we have done in our sessions in our regular classes. These are just revision summary series for you. Okay, and today's is a French Revolution and French Revolution definitely this is important for you. Lots of questions being asked from here. When you study French Revolution, focus on the causes of French Revolution. The causes of French Revolution. Have a look into the causes, causes of the French Revolution. And you must build up a multi-dimensional approach. Causes can be political causes, intellectual causes, economic causes, social causes, okay, cultural causes. So definitely you will have to build up and build up a multi-dimensional approach when you analyze, when you study the causes, consequences of the major events in world history. So focus on the causes, focus on the course of the revolution, or maybe major events in that particular course of revolution and focus on these uh, consequences so this uh, triple c format is important for you when you approach world history for your civil service examination okay causes cause and these consequences of major events here also you when you study french revolution focus on causes cause and consequences multi dimensional approach take care yeah when it comes to the political causes of French Revolution, French Revolution, take care, it popularized three slogans in the world, liberty, equality, fraternity, liberty, equality, fraternity, and many revolutions in the Europe heavily influenced by this French Revolution. Now here, political causes, definitely despotic monarchy. Okay, when you discuss these political causes, when you discuss the political causes of French Revolution, take care. The despotic monarchy largely responsible for French Revolution. Okay, the Bourbon dynasty, it was it was totally defective. I mean, Louis 15, Louis 16, even Louis 14, Louis 14, 15, 16. Yes, their administration was corrupted administration. It was defective administration, and also the national income, national expenditure was rather, I mean, higher than the national income, and many of these income they spent toward these their luxuries and their extravagances only okay this national income is not spent toward this welfare of the people is yes, what all they earned that is spent toward their own luxuries and their own extravagances only and also they claimed divinity of their rulership they called themselves representative of god louis louis 14 i am the state nobody can cross question me nobody can question my reforms and my orders whatever then Louis XV, he was a butterfly monarch. He was known for his defective foreign policy. And it, it was during his time, French faced again a huge economic depression. Then Louis XV, again, it was during his time, these uh, French laws to seven years war to England that further, further enhanced, increased economic burden upon the French society. Then Louis XVI, he was also a defective, he was a weak ruler during his time. Yes, he was heavily influenced by, by his wife, okay. Wife was Mary Antoinette and uh, uh, she always blocked the reforms which was against the aristocracy and nobility, okay. She always believed, she was from Austrian, um, I mean she was from Austrian royal family and she always believed the king, French emperor, is not supposed to like listen to the common peoples and their sufferings, etc. Okay, so it is because of her bad advisor. She was a bad advisor because of her wrong advisors. Yes, of course, Louis Louis 16 also not focused on the welfare of the common people. They all simply focused on this welfare of the first and second estates only. Aristocratic and noble classes only benefited from these rulers. So their defective administration and their corruption and of course their luxuries and extravagances, yes, that is a huge reason why the people were totally against this despotic monarchy. Now economic causes, one of the major causes is economic disparity, disparity in the taxes. You see, yes, French, French society, you can see first estate, second estate, third estate, three estate divisions are there, which we already studied in our class. 
so out of which you see only third estate the farmers the farmers artisans or this landless labor or this middle classes etc they were supposed to pay taxes okay the first estate second estate maybe it is the clergy or these nobles the aristocrats etc yes they had they enjoyed all the wealth and all the power privileges etc but they were not supposed to pay taxes all the tax burden imposed upon the third estate only okay so that economic disparity or disparity in taxation that is one of the major reason you see they how to pay tax to common people had to pay tax to church ta tax to church tax to state and also uh, like the american war okay maybe the loss of the 70 years war and this participation in the american american war okay all these increased the debt burden of the france and the uh, the french government what that it is whenever there is an additional economic burden that directly they put on these put in the form of tax on these people on the common people okay and also there is failure of the crops and uh, uh, the reforms economic reforms never executed never implemented properly okay so all these economic burdens you know it was put upon this uh, put on these common people and it was their reaction okay social causes you see that uh, french society divided into three estate first estate second estate third estate as it is shown in the image all the burden is upon the third estate only okay first estate is clergy they had no so called uh, financial burdens they had no such uh, additional responsibilities clergy segment like a uh, bishops cardinals and all those you know they enjoyed i mean they were the upper creamy layer enjoyed all the privileges all the luxuries no tensions even the second estate nobility also had no burden of the tax paying okay the third estate which is the bushas the middle class or the teachers doctors or the peasants and these artisans etc they had all the burden of tax paying okay and they have no social status no political representation all the luxuries privileges and all those things have gone to the first and second estate only this third estate had only this they had no proper social dignity so no social status no voting powers and also full economic burden is imposed upon them clergy and nobility first and second estates they were exempted from taxes and they held most of these uh, higher administrative posts and also major proportion of major share of this total land of the france that is also held by these first and second estate they lived in extravagances and luxuries okay but the common people the third estate the middle class artisans workers etc yes they had all sufferings okay they had all sufferings they had no political rights they had no voting powers they had a, a no social status they had a full of humiliations artisans city workers peasants teachers they had a full of humiliations no social status no political rights okay so it was basically a bourgeoisie revolution it was a revolution of the middle classes revolution of the common people okay there is frequent corruption there is extravagances in the spending and all but all burden is on this third estate intellectual courses are also there which you have to study intellectual courses you take a rousseau walter montesquieu three prominent thinkers or three prominent philosophers of the french society rousseau walter montesquieu they heavily or their philosophies their teachings heavily influenced these uh, french revolutionary ideas or french revolutionaries okay walter yes he propagated the idea of individual liberties freedom of religion freedom of expression freedom of movement freedom of press and he fought i mean he he uh, spoke against inequality social inequality and despotic government etc okay it ignited the spirit of that revolutionary spirit of the french society Montesquieu promoted the idea of separation of power, separation from church, and there should be a checks and balance system. There should be executive, legislative, okay, judicial departments of government. There should be proper republican government. Then Rousseau, Rousseau social contract theory that is regarded as the bible of the French Revolution. Rousseau promoted the social contract theory. Yes, where this consent of the governed is important. okay consent of this permission of this government is important sovereignty of the people is important there should be people's participation there should be collective uh, collective responsibility or maybe there is a collective will there is a general will okay the government or the ruler must rule according to the general will okay people's sovereignty is important than the ruler people's sovereignty is important than the ruler the freedom 
okay freedom individual freedom collective freedom i mean it's 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 a social freedom and equality social equality and happiness of the people all these things are important when it comes to good governance when it comes to uh, governance okay so this walter mondowski russo the teachings okay it 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 ignited a literary revolution and it ignited the spirit of this french society french revolutionaries that is largely responsible for this uh, uh, french revolution again let me tell you those like a uh, uh, like a church the authorities of the church or maybe the outdated laws of the church also is responsible for this uh, french revolution okay they wanted a liberal church a liberal, liberal religion now all started with the state general that is 1789 when there is a huge economic crisis when there was a huge economic crisis louis sistine decided to convene this estate general this is you know representatives of the first and second and third estates they will be coming together and there will be a discussion and there will be passage of a bill or there will be additional i mean louis sistine wanted to uh, i mean add this additional like uh, i mean taxes on the people okay this is this is this is after 175 years he decided to convene this particular estate general that is to address the economic depression or financial crisis they are facing so this meeting will be a solution to add additional taxes impose additional taxes on people to meet this financial crisis okay so here this estate general meeting it was on 5th may 1789 that was the beginning of this french revolution see in this in this meeting you can see first estate and second estate they got a good representation they got a voting powers but the third estate you know one vote for one individual or one member that is not accepted by louis 16 okay in this estate general meeting in this estate general meeting the third estate yes they totally discontented dissatisfied with this voting system they never got this uh, one voting for one person that right they never got so that the estate general meeting it was deadlocked over that to voting rights okay even they are not and permitted to enter this main hall and what happened is these third estate generals i mean third estate uh, sorry uh, yeah third estate representatives they formed a national assembly june 1789 they took an oath in the nearby tennis court june 20 1789 they decided that they will end this monarchy they will introduce a constitutional monarchy or a constitutional government okay they boycotted that uh, they boycotted that estate general meeting because they had no voting rights there okay so they decided yes they formed this national assembly decided that we will be formulating a constitutional democracy or a constitutional republican government then you can see that uh, uh, yeah this national assembly louis 16 had no other options yes national assembly accepted then louis 16 also started these reactionary measures against this uh, third estate or maybe national assembly uh, representatives it was a stage of state of insurgency then these revolutionaries they attacked this uh, uh, bastille prison or bastille fortress okay bastille fortress that was regarded as the imperial sign of this uh, french uh, uh, despotism or french despotic government and fall of this bastille prison means that was the fall of this despotic government also okay the fall of this bastille prison that was the imperial sign of this uh, might of this despotic ruler of french and the fall of this the revolutionaries attacked the bastille prison and this bastille fortress or bastille prison fallen that was the symbolic fall of this symbolic fall of this uh, autocracy also national assembly yes it uh, it drafted laws for the new government according to goodwin no other single event of the revolution has so many side sided and far reaching result as fall of this uh, fall of bastille so bastille prison the fall of the bastille prison or the fall of this bastille fortress that was the that was the symbolic fall of this despotic autocratic uh, government of this uh, france after which there is widespread revolts then there is national assembly drafting this uh, declaration rights of men and citizen new constitution adopted on 13th 7 september 1791 and introduced to constitutional monarchy introduction of constitutional monarchy no more feudal system no more feudal economy no more feudal polity this constitutional monarchy was adopted that now 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 there is a constitution and uh, the monarchy is not uh, having absolute powers now now after that national assembly replaced with the legislative assembly 1791 uh, louis 
yeah collusion with these foreign monarchs now here you can see that uh, louis 16 he made a desperate attempt to bring back to power okay he is under the constitution now but uh, he sided with the conspired with other foreign governments for example this austria and all okay they all decided to end this revolution in the france and decided to bring this uh, king back to the power then louis conspired with uh, these uh, foreign governments and what happened is yes this this revolutionaries become so angry new elections were held national convention was elected it uh, scrapped the old constitution abolished monarchy and uh, french republic was adopted okay the national convention scrapped to all the monarchical constitution abolished monarchy and uh, french republic french republic was adopted under new constitution after which you can see that uh, there is uh, there is like emergence of the political clubs across this uh, france then you can see that uh, there is there is continuous massacre okay revolutionaries they focused on killing these uh, people who is against revolution whoever is against revolution who, whoever is against revolutionary government they were killed down there is continuous massacre of these uh, anti revolutionaries that is known as september massacre that was terror and uh, even this louis was also executed jacobian club out of the political clubs one club became popular that was jacobian club power shifted to jacobian club it was reign of terror all these who is who is against revolution they are executed guillotine of robespierre robespierre was the popular ruler of this jacobian club and uh, he focused on massive killing of these anti revolutionaries guillotine you see this is the method of killing these uh, yes people who is against revolution so all these nobles aristocrats or royal families who are is against revolution they were tortured and they were killed down okay so finally robespierre also faced the same guillotine and his death was fall of this jacobian era 1795 then comes directory rule directory rule national convention it adopted republican constitution it had the power to choose disband new parliament republican government it had a legislative and executive uh, body you know directory body but a directory body it failed okay there is there is issues between legislative and this executive body there is political corruptions financial crisis when directory was in fail you can see that uh, it was the beginning of or it was the age of napoleon bonaparte okay it, that power shifted to military governorship napoleon bonaparte yes he rose to occasion so uh, you see napoleon bonaparte when there is when there is political issues during that uh, uh, direct directory government or directory role yes power shifted to military general military dictator napoleon bonaparte coming on power this order you follow national assembly legislative assembly national convention directory and to napoleon okay the major events the major major events or the timeline of this french revolution just to follow this napoleon came into power he centralized to the administration napoleonic code is introduced uh, then of course lots of lots of changes introduced by napoleon bonaparte concordat is the continental system is the okay uh, so those things we discussed in our session now reasons for his failure i'm not discussing in detail because we have done in our class napoleonic measures including continental system limitless ambitions then moscow invasion that is a wrong strategy withdraw russia support and finally he defeated he was defeated in waterloo battle now this french revolution that is significant because abolition of feudalism introduction of napoleonic code then generation of capitalism then building up of this national state sovereignty of the people it was promoted here highlighted here that was a classic example of revolution then abolition of the slavery then universal adult suffrage introduced later then social equality democratic institutions projected promoted these are some basic these are some basic uh, like uh, significance of this uh, french revolution which you have to focus on for india also there is inspiration french revolution was inspiration in multiple ways yes nationalism okay this uh, tipu sultan or uh, Raj, rajara mohan roy they were highly inspired by these french revolutionary ideas yes indian constitution uh, or the idea of republicanism then this inspiration for rajana mohan roy tipu sultan all is 
you know french revolution heavily influential inspirational for indian leaders and indian political movements also okay these things you take care and detailed analysis we have done in the session just focus on that okay revise it very well all the best thank you